Hello, welcome to another Redline demo. Um, today we're going to be talking about wrist locks. We're going to be talking about wrist spaces. We're going to be talking about how um, the new systems within the Redline Puppet and within Redline Pro Pack enable you to interact with objects in a much easier streamlined fashion. Rather than setting up lots of constraints and pair blends and snapping things around, it's all done for you. So, with that in mind, what we've got, I'll just refresh the connection. What we've got in here is we've got a piece of mocap and we've got a gun. Um, human me, it's a gun. It's a cylinder, I know, but it, for the sake of argument, it's a gun in this one. And in this bit of mocap, guy's clearly holding a gun. It's clearly a two-handed weapon because as he comes down, he grabs a, the butt of the gun and jumps down and rolls around, etc. Okay. So what I want to do, um, we'll go through some of the more um, intricacies of this uh, in a minute. But the first thing I want to do is just show you how easy it is to set a scene up like this. What you do normally is you probably set a constraint. You probably move that up to into the hand. You do a parent constraint of the weapon into the hand. But at that point, you've also then got to transfer the data from the wrist into the hand. So this is a situation where most animators would make lots of locators and they'd trap locators and they'd constrain locators and it all gets very messy. Don't have to do any of that with this. Um, what we'll do first is we'll find a position where both hands are holding a gun and we can kind of get a reference point somewhere around there, let's say. So the first thing we're going to do is put this gun into this hand. So we'll just do snap. This is our snap object here. Uh, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that roughly into position. It doesn't have to be accurate particularly, but you know, obviously if you're doing mocap, you might have a, um, a mocap node that, that takes this data for you. But for this one, I'm just going to try and extract it. Okay. Something like that ish is probably good enough for the sake of argument. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, so let's say there's the weapon and that's the position that weapon needs to be in his hands. So the first thing I want to do is I want to constrain or I want to bind this weapon to the wrist, but I want to transfer the data from the wrist back to the weapon. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the wrist lock control space, which is this. It's in Pro Pack. Whoops. Uh, wrist lock manager. If it's not got wrist locks, if it's not a red nine puppet, you'll get a thing to say this is incompatible. If I right click on any of the objects, it's also here. Wrist lock orc space. It's this thing here. There we go. Okay, so we're going to select the weapon and we're going to pick a slot. Each wrist has three slots. Um, and the idea of these is that they're available to bounce the object around in multiple places. Okay, so we're going to pick that. Uh, we're going to pick the right wrist. So we say that. Oops, object. Right wrist, new space. We get a prompt, uh, and this initial prompt basically is what do you want to do with the space that we currently have? So, down in the bottom of the object, down in the bottom of the scene, we have the both wrist locks, left and right, which are at zero, 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 and clearly no relationship to where the data is. So, snapping to the new target would be a good idea had I not already aligned the weapon where it is. The weapon is where it is, the wrist is where it is, so the alignment between these two is where it should be. So, I want to maintain wrist positions. I can main, maintain wrist lock positions, which you'll see in a minute. So we go maintain, and you'll see this is our wrist lock object, this thing here, this, this crazy looking thing. <clears throat> and this object now has orc space one. <coughs> you'll see it has an awful lot of secondary spaces. We'll go through those in a minute. But without doing anything, that gun is now being maintained by, uh, sorry, the wrist is now being maintained by the gun. So the gun is now in control. And that is because on the wrists themselves, we have this thing, wrist lock. And that is basically a soft constraint onto this object. This object is already part of, um, of the rig. So it's already internally in the rig. So blending between is already set up. You don't have to worry about that. So what I'll do is let's just drop a key between those two. Oops, let me do that. We'll drop a key between those two objects. Where were we? That frame there. Drop a key just to make sure this thing's in the right space. But what I want to do is I want to transfer the data of the animation from the wrist over to the over to the gun because obviously that's no use to not to anybody. So we'll get the frame. There we go. And what we're going to do is use this little thing here, which is a tracker. And all that's doing is it figures out the relationship between the position of the wrist lock and the gun, and it'll just backtrack it over time. So what we've got now is we've got a gun in his hand, animating away. Guy's doing all this stuff, but the gun is actually in control. So the gun is animating. The hand isn't animating anymore. We still have the hand data because the hand is obviously got the keys, but it's not actually being used at the moment. And what I want to do as well is obviously put the same data onto the other hand because the other hand is going to, you know, there's going to be some slippage. So we'll do that and we'll say left hand. 
set new space. Uh, we can maintain again. We're just going to say maintain. There's the new wrist space that goes there. I can just move that around, let's say, just because I don't think we're quite right. Somewhere there, shall we say. Okay, we'll set that relationship. And at that point now, the gun is completely in control of both hands. But there's obviously something wrong at the top. He's not meant to be holding it with both hands at the top. So this is where the soft blending comes in. There's the wrist, that's where it should be. And you can see it whipping up to where it should be holding a gun, which is somewhere around there. So what we'll do is let's just have a look at the anim curves graph. Where are we? Over here. Hang on a second. Uh, let's just put a key. So we'll go at somewhere around there where he's meant to be holding it. We'll put a key on the wrist lock. So key, posh. And at somewhere around there, we'll put the mocap back in control of that wrist lock. That's of the wrist itself. Okay, so. Holds the object, weapon is in control, we've transferred the data and it's taken us five minutes. That weapon's in control, we can animate the weapon. If we want to animate the position of the wrists on said weapon, there's my wrist controller. We have no keys on this, we have one key which just says where it is. But I can quite easily just move that around, set another key, move it around. Do you know what I mean? It, it's really, really easy to bounce this data around. Let's say there, let's say at that point there, we just want to modify and he's got to shift his grip a little bit key done you know we're mo at that point we are physically moving ourselves in relation to this object because this has got its orc space set to one and the orc space you'll see here is set to the cylinder you'll notice we have different spaces we'll get to that in a second okay so just to reiterate that this this left hand here at this point mocap is in control You'll notice that the orc space is up here. That's where the target for it is. It's effectively a target constraint. Whenever I slide it onto one, it will go away and this will be the object that we're, that we're, that we're targeting to. But again, these are loose constraints. You know, this thing is, in, is constrained to the thing, but it's actually free to move and key. So we can move it up and round. We can slip our, gut, slip our controls and we can choose to go back into uh, the wrist at any one point. So that's really easy. Um, like I say, a couple of minutes and we've done it. What we can do is if we want to put that data back, let's say we've then gone away, we've modified the gun and we've you know, changed everything on it, but we want to put that data off the wrist locks back onto the wrist because we want to control it a little bit more. We have this. So we have a way of baking the data back from the systems back to the wrist, which is then modify what's going on to the curves of the wrists. I can delete the wrist completely here. In fact, let's do that just to make sure. Uh, da, 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 where I cookie selected, yes, go away. And any reason that's done that is because we need to just drive that on. So at that point, there's my wrist, there's no data on it. Everything is on the wrist locks. And if I really wanted to, what I can do is I can just bake and bake that, bake, bake that data back to the wrists. Right wrist pops, sorry, left wrist, yes, right wrist <laughs> pops back into shape because we've baked it to it. And because we've baked it to it, that is no longer in control. So hopefully that's a really quick, easy demo. Um, if I put this thing back into T-Pose and let's just cut all the keys from it just so we clean everything up a little bit. Let's do that and we'll delete these objects. Just delete the spaces, delete. That just deletes what's available on AUX1, by the way. That's just literally deleting the constraints. And we'll just delete this object as well. Uh, no, we won't, can't be bothered. Okay, uh, let's, do, let's do something a little bit easier. We said it had lots of different spaces on it. So let's say we're in headspace. Let's say he wants to scratch his head at this point. Okay, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to go, I'm going to go headspace. So if we do that, and what we can do is just snap that to that, click, and we'll get to the wrist locks back up because obviously these things are buried sometimes. Whoops, wrong ones. Wrist lock space, left wrist. There we go, just grab that where we want it. Drive it on, move it around. Let's have a look, where should we be? We should be uh, somewhere around there-ish kind of thing. So at that point, again, these are internal ones that are set. This is not necessarily using all of these systems, it's just using this to select. This is in headspace. Head is in control of the object, so whatever I do, I can then choose to soft blend whenever I want back to 
the wrist controller and at that point I can just move this space and I don't know, have it associated to the hips. At that point we can then go back on and move it around. So because it's a separate object, it's in the rig, it's managed by all our systems, whenever the hand is in control, you can move the wrist lock around, snap it around, you don't have to, con you don't have to modify the curves or make them nice and clean. When you want it uh, to constrain, you literally just turn that back on and off it goes. We said it had multiple spaces. Let's just do a really quick one with this. Let's have a ball. I always do balls, don't know why. Let's move that up there. Okay, and we were saying about these other spaces when you, uh, when you set the object. So if we do that, we go set left space. So we, we've been using this one. I'm gonna do snap to new target and you'll see the rest pops into the space of this object. And all it's doing is snapping into the position of the pivot, which just makes it a little bit easier for you to then go away and do what you need to. Ball is back in control. If we had a secondary object, let's say a cube, and we'll have a cube over here somewhere, I don't know, just there. And let's say we want that cube now to be in control. We can go cube, add a secondary object, snap it into space. Yes, control. Let's rotate that. Uh, kind of thing. So at that point, cube is in control, but the sphere is still in the list. So wrist lock one is still the sphere. So again, you can bounce them around. It's all managed for you. Um, hopefully that was kind of obvious. It, it's it's one of these things that um, we actually first wrote it for Pirates of the Caribbean, which was the first Xbox game. So I mean, we're going back 2004, five, something like this, and it was written specifically to, for um, background characters to be able to hold props and hold, you know, brushes and all sorts of stuff. Um, we've been putting it on our rigs for years, but we only came up with this system um, within the last four or five releases. So um, anyone using Puppet, this is available for you, and it's all in the systems. Um, anyway, have fun. Let me know if you want uh, any more information. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.